Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be talking about cross-platform distribution, which I'm really excited about. It's in the works. I've had this idea for 10 months now, so it's kind of I'm kind of happy that I'm able to make this video. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is optimizations. If you didn't catch it, in the last video, this app over here, Google Keep, was 7 megabytes, but now it's 1.8. So let me talk about the optimizations I made, and then we'll get to the the automation of the distribution for Mac, Linux, and Windows. So I have open now the Google Keep app and there's two ways to optimize. So the first way is the allow list. Now, since this is a website, you can set alt to false, but I have all these options here to just explain and go over it. To get all those options, you need the Tower extension installed and then you can just autocomplete and it'll enter all those options there. And what we thought before is that this is just for security purposes, but it goes beyond that. In the template I have open, I've added these optimizations in so that I can get the finest control over it. And you'll see that those APIs that I used, I have turned them on. And there's two things that are important or a couple things that are important. So something like scope, has to be a list of strings. So I've included app as well as download because we write a file to the downloads folder. And we need to get that downloads folder so we need to have access to the path API. And what's really important is the shell API. The shell API for open, it's set to false, but if you set it to true, or it was set to false, but when you set it to true, it only accepts HTTP links. Now, what we need is that we need to accept a path or anything really that we want. So what we can do is we can use the regular expression period, which stands for any character. And then we can use star for to match any amount of times, including zero. You could make it plus. It's really not that important right now because we just needed to get the path. And what they mean by you need to care should be used is that you shouldn't let someone other than the user interact with the open the open thing because that means that a third party could basically root or you know have access remote access to the user's computer now that's bad so obviously that and lastly there is a set size that we use so that's why it was set to true it seems that the read to like a read stuff is okay. It's only the the set stuff that you need to actually set to true. So let's get to the next set of optimizations, which is the Rust optimization. So over here, I have these, I've added these five lines. This too is from the documentation. The first one just said to allow list. So this one actually gave us some options from the docs, the docs gave us some options. What's important here is S, so op level. Op level can be from one, two, three, S or Z. Tauri recommends S for the apps they made. If you have time, you can play around with it, especially for something like if you're actually coding more Rust functions, then you'd probably want to play around with this. There's also this thing called strip equals true. This was separate from these four, but it was still in the documentation. I didn't notice any difference. And so you should include it because then it's unnecessary work that the compiler or you're in the next step, which or what I'm going to talk about is the cross-platform development. So obviously I didn't want to do that. So that's a problem. So moving on to automated building for or you know, for all platforms. Here, uh, what you need to do is you need to open my template as well as your, my template as well as your GitHub repository. I don't have the instructions for, or I don't want to spend my time creating a tool to automate it on anything because I require you to use virtual machines and I'm not going to do that spend a lot of time on that. But if you're a enterprise, that's kind of something you'd be looking for if you don't want to use GitHub. So uh, I can give you how to do it without GitHub, but it's not, I'm not going to do the work there for you. 
right? But if you're on GitHub, I've done the work for you because we're just like me. So what you need to do is you go to actions and you can see that I have one running here because I created a tag. So that kind of is a hint. But the next thing you want to do is click new workflow. And then you want to copy and click setup workflow yourself. And then what you want to do is copy my workflow that I have available from either my template or my Google Keep app. Now I recommend since we're doing it generalized, we don't want to use the Google Keep app. So you go to my template, go to build.yaml and you go to raw, copy this, come over here, rename it to whatever you want, rename this to whatever you want. And now I'll explain two things. I'll explain what I did differently from the Towery documentation on how to build stuff. So if you go here and you go to guides and you go to building and you go to cross-platform compilation and you look at this, you may think, oh, I just copied it. And that's, that's not exactly true because I did a couple things differently, which will improve your user experience and will improve the future proofing of the app. If I had not done my work, things would not be going as smoothly or in the future for you. So let's talk about two things. We'll talk about what this does as well as what I changed. So over here, it just means that whenever a tag is pushed that starts with the version, you do want to do something. Now you can actually change this to anything. It doesn't matter because it's going to be, it's going to remain the same either way because of something I changed later on. It could be alpha, it could be star itself. It's really not that important. If, uh, if you want to do other stuff other than version, then uh, yeah. Okay, next we have strategy and uh, runs on, okay? So this is really hard to understand if you're starting from scratch, but since we're given it, we can kind of read it and infer what's going on. So matrix is basically an array and it's this platform. So there's three platforms, runs on matrix.platform. So this just means that it runs on these three things. And these are actual things like not strings, they're actual objects. So they would be GitHub's runners. Okay, that's what they call it. So here are some things I changed. It says uh, check out repository. What was being used before was version two. I'm using version three. And uh, here, after that, I decided, okay, we want to build a change log now. So there's two ways you can do it. If you're like me and you don't really organize your commits, you just do whatever. You don't really put those labels on the commits or anything like other people do or emojis. Like some people take it way too far with the commits. Commit is just Git, right? It's version control. You don't have to like format it. You shouldn't be relying on it to format or do anything like that. So there's two things you can do. You can, if you are organized, you can use this changelog builder action to either use PRs or commits themselves. And, or you can just leave a, what's that called? A template there for you to do later. Next we have Node.js setup. Now, Tauri was using a version one of this and I'm using version three. So version three means you can do a bunch more stuff. Like you can use the latest LTS, latest version of Node. You can do a bit more complicated things. And I was trying to debug that why it wasn't working. And then I figured out it was because the, they had included a version one when the features I wanted were in version three. So there's two things here. Two, there's a note here for people who want consistency or stability. So since I like to live on the edge of glory, like Lady Gaga said, or in this case, the bleeding edge of technology, we, or I want to use the latest node version. But for people who want to, you know, have a fixed node version, I have you covered as well. You can either, you know, overwrite this with a version or you can be a bit smarter about it and use an NVMRC file. Now, what is an NVMRC file? Well, I'm glad you might have asked because I also figured that out yesterday. And it's basically a file that has the node version you're using. And you may be wondering, okay, how do I get that and how do I automate that part as well? And I have you covered there. You just add a script called NVMRC which runs node minus V into dot NVMRC. And in my opinion, you should run that every time you install something as well as every time you are developing. This way, 
that file is always up to date and you won't run into it and you won't have to update. You won't have to tell the DevOps guy to update anything or you don't have to update anything yourself. The next thing I changed is how do you install Rust? Now, if you look here, they're using an actual action here. While I have just used a curl, I've just used the instructions that Rust provides ourselves. So since we're just using the stable version of Rust, we can just do this. And I don't know why you'd want to use the nightly version unless you're testing nightly version features. So stable is good. This is a non-interactive install. And what happened is that when I, I was using this over here, this hasn't been updated in three years and it still runs on node 12. The person has not updated to run on node 16. And in my opinion, the less dependencies you have to external people, the better. Rust up is made in Rust. This is a shell script of Rust up. And this is a Node.js wrapper for Rust up. Do you not see the problem there? I see the problem there. So that's why this is this worked. I tested this out and it worked for me. And you know, if it works, then don't do needless steps. Next, uh, this is remains the same. And here's something a bit more important again, install app dependencies and build web. So this is more better if you call it a build front end or web. I'm not entirely sure exactly what to do, but over here, you should build the front end. So for me, since I'm using React or anything, pretty sure all the front end uh, no, like JavaScript frameworks can be built with yarn build as your script. So you want to run yarn to install the dependencies, and then you want to run yarn build to build the front end. You don't want to build the back end, okay? Don't do that part yourself because uh, Tauri provides their own action for that. And that also does a bit more stuff. So what was I going to say? Oh yeah, if you're like me and you built the Google Keep app, so that means converting a website into a app, then you can comment this part out over here. I've added a comment just for you guys. And lastly, we want to build the app. So this action is using the older version of the core, meaning that in some time in the near future, unless the bug is fixed, I've reported the bug, but it's possible that the workflow will break and you just have to tell the guy to like Fabian, the Tauri developer, you just have to tell him to basically prioritize the issue because he said he'd do it when he has time and instead of doing it at the moment because of some TypeScript issues. But anyways, that is my grunt with TypeScript. And lastly, two things you wanna do. So I changed this part over here. Before it was underscore, underscore, version, underscore, underscore, but I've made it tag name as the GitHub ref name so that if you wanted to publish on any tag, then it would work uh, seamlessly. But if you just stuck to version of uh, this version, that means that if you publish a tag different from the version in your config file, that means the release would get, the assets would get up added to a different tag. So that's kind of uh, not exactly what you're expecting. So I've updated that, but the title of the release is still the same, okay? And the release body is basically the change log plus see the asset to download. And I've decided to follow Tauri and say release draft is true because you still need to add that change log. After you've done this, you click start commit and there are two ways to run the build. So as it says, you wanna create the tag. So how do you create a tag? Now, I actually know only one way to create a tag in GitHub and uh, in GitHub itself, not, not the other thing. And that is you go to releases and you have to create a draft release over here. And then you have to click new tag. Like it says find or create a tag, right? So you have to do that. And then what happens is that this stuff does not get updated. So I recommend what you do is you go to your, in, I know it's in Bitbucket, but I don't know why it's not on GitHub, but you can, in Bitbucket, you can do it in the UI, but over here, since we're on GitHub, we can do it on our local thing. So we click a commit like this, okay? And we click, okay, I'll go over here. We click add tag, okay? And then you do version 
1.0.10 or something. You want to confirm with your config file and then you click push to remote and then you click add tag. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. And what happens is that I will show you exactly what happens. You go to actions over here. What happens is that as you saw before on this tag, this happened. So it started building. Don't, uh, by the way, this is, this is from Tauri's plugin, like I said before. So what happens is that this gets created afterwards. And now you have this. I'm not sure if notifications are enabled yet for successful builds, but as soon as that's done, so you just have to wait five minutes or so. You click edit and you click add change log. So let me just look at what we did. So we can just say add ROS optimizations and click preview and then we should be good. Click enter again and then we do publish release. Go to releases and there we have it, we're done. In the next video, I wanna talk about how to do auto updating. So that'll require access to a server and I'm just gonna use my website as a server. So you can just follow along whenever you want in the future, when you have your own server and you wanna do it professionally. But I already have a server to take care of the server uh, auto update stuff. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful and let me know uh, in the comments for anything you want, uh, obviously like before. And I'll see you in the next one.